We're on the tracks of a serial killer that somehow is copying a series of murder our grandpa investigated 80 years ago? Hi, I'm Nick, and this is Hidden Gems on Retro Games with Nick. So, if you missed part one of our still life playthrough, um, I encourage you to stop watching this video, go back and catch up on part one. Um, if you insist on wanting to watch this, thank you, first of all. Uh, but to give you a brief summary of what happened last time, we are Tori McPherson, uh, the uh, beautiful lady pictured in the um, box art that you can see on the right. Uh, and we're an FBI agent that's currently working in Chicago. We're on the tracks of a serial killer that is doing all sorts of nasty shit to women. And it's Christmas, and we go back to our dad's house, and we're reading through a uh, journal that our grandpa wrote back in 1929 in Prague that seems to be surprisingly similar to the case that we are currently working on. Why? Who knows? Let's keep playing. Uh, in terms of what the grandpa is doing, the game switches back and forth between Victoria and Gus, which is the grandpa. Uh, so we've been uh, talking to our prostitute friends and trying to figure out, you know, what's been happening. We found a ring that I think was taken from one of the victims, and then a crow grabbed it and brought it to a man that was at the top of a dilapidated tower. So that's where we're going to pick it up from. Oh my, has my friend here stolen this from you? He has, yes. I cannot help but be embarrassed. You see, I taught him to retrieve shiny objects for me, and he does so remarkably well, don't you think? Yes, he does. Being a coachman in an industrialized world is not quite what it used to be. Where are you from, sir? If you don't mind my asking. I'm from all over Europe, it seems, sometimes. I usually don't stay in one spot for very long, but I've stayed here for a while now. My legs don't allow me to travel very far, I'm afraid. But to answer your question, I'm from London, England. That was a very roundabout way of giving the answer. Come now. You used to be a detective, or a cop even, right? I'm a simple coachman and wish to remain that. I ask you to no longer continue in this line of questioning. Please, out of genuine courtesy. Very well. Who are you? On good days, as I mentioned earlier, I work as a coachman for the odd tourist or for the prostitutes who want to make their way through the city at a bargain price. On not so good days, my friend whom you've already met becomes a thief to help me make ends meet. On bad days, I'm nearly reduced to being a homeless bum. So you know some of the prostitutes around here? Yes, I do. I've driven them here and there through the city streets. They hire me or their clients hire me, either because I'm cheaper than a taxi or they appreciate the rustic look. Do you know any personally? I knew one personally. On certain occasions, we would exchange pleasantries, but most of the time, I would just drive. She was very young to be doing what those animals wanted. Her name was Vladana. She was only 16 years old. She was? Yes. I haven't seen her in a long time. I fear the worst. You said her name was Vladana. Are you sure it's not Inezka? Very sure. Vladana reminded me of a girl I once knew as a To be fair, man. there's like six victims already, so... You must surely know about the murders. Indeed I do. Anyone who lives in this district knows. That is why I fear for Vladana's well-being. May I ask you a few questions? Sure. Who are you? And why are you so interested in the local problems? I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Gus McPherson. I'm a private investigator hired by the prostitutes to help stop the murders. They are, for obvious reasons, worried about the situation and have no confidence in the police's competence. Admirable, Mr. McPherson. Admirable indeed. I have to admit that I have lost all hope in humanity. 
the things I have seen during my miserable life. You, Mr. McPherson, have restored my faith. Tell me, is it true? Is there a new one that washed up on the shore of the river? She didn't wash up. Never mind, that's not important. Unfortunately, yes, there is. Did you see her? Yes, I did. Don't worry, my friend. Her name wasn't Vladana. She was known as Frantiska. Thank you, Mr. McPherson. You've reassured me. You said that the body did not wash up on the shore. No, she didn't. She was, uh, forgive the expression, dumped there. How is this possible? There is only one way a man can travel throughout the city without being seen, Mr. McPherson. The sewers. Precisely. He is using them to move back and forth, limiting the possibility of witnesses. I've stumbled on a few underground passages in this city, but I never found any in this neck of the woods. Maybe you should start looking for some. It would certainly help you in your investigation. Have you talked to the police about your theory? Yes, I have. But who listens to a homeless bum? Especially not one who outwits the inspector. That Inspector Skullnick is quite a unique individual. Unique, huh? Is that Latin for asshole? <laughs> <laughs> I do wish that now that there's only one path, you cannot pick your dialogue, right? Right click, as you can see the little mouse in the corner. If the right button was red, you could right click to get some auxiliary information. And the left click is for the main thing. If there is no auxiliary information, I kind of wish they just would give me the full dialogue from the start. Is there anything else you can tell me that might help me in my investigation? I'm afraid not, Mr. McPherson. Only that little theory of mine. I'm only a coachman trying to survive, and this little fellow helps me. Speaking of which, may I have that ring back? Dear me, of course. Thank you. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. It's quite all right. Oh, that's it? Well, I guess we have a little bit of a journal to read. Let's see, a man who wants to remain anonymous but claims he's from London and has figured out more about the case than the primary investigator. Plus, he can apparently train Bert to steal for him. What do I feel like he knows more than he's telling me? Um, okay. I mean, we, we got, uh... Get the ring with spikes. I don't know what to do with that yet, but I guess we're gonna head back. Story time. Gus? That is Ida, Ida, our current girlfriend. What are you doing here? I found something that might help you. Weren't you supposed to see the doctor? Ida, please don't do this. Do what? Help. Why can't I help you? Because it's dangerous. Don't you know there's a seriously deranged man roaming the streets, preying on women? Oh, I can handle myself. I don't doubt that for a second. But I'd like to know that you're somewhere safe so I can concentrate on the case and not worry about you. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, what have you found out? Oh, it's really good. I was asking a few questions of some of the women. Anyway, one of them admitted that she'd heard that one of the victims survived an attack and was hiding in the scrapyard. That's great. But how reliable is the source? I have to admit it's only a rumor. But isn't it worth taking a look? Yes, it is. Be careful. I will. Stay off the streets, but first go see the doctor. Yes, I will. I'll see you later. A and Ida? Yes? Thanks for the info. You're welcome, and I love you too. She's been throwing up every morning. I wonder what that could mean. Mission is maybe not great in this game. That's that's one downside. This reminds me of the Madison Avenue arsonist case I worked on. Let's see what's around the corner, I guess. Oh, 
Oh yeah, and we have vision sometimes. Hasn't been quite explained why why this is the case. Uh, this is such a cool framing, you know, from a window opposite. Guess we should try and investigate the sewers? Oh, yeah, there's more stuff. Uh, this is where we currently are. Let's go to the junkyard. What kind of a moron parks there? Uh-oh. I'm out of here. That kind of moron. All right, we first need to clear off this uh, personal disagreement that we have. Basically, the pimp of uh, all of these prostitutes thinks we're trying to encroach on his territory. So it's time we kind of just uh, talk to him and figure this shit out. Hey, Kubina, open up. We need to talk. What do you want? I'd like to ask you a few questions. About? First off, I'd like to clear the air between us. I'm not after your girls. I'm just trying to find the killer, and that's all. You expect me to believe that? Yes, I do. Well, I don't. Everyone wants something. Just stay out of my business, McPherson. Yes, I do want something from you, but it's not your girls. Hmm. I'm listening. Let's exchange favors. I'll do something for you so you can see I'm on the level with you. In return, all you have to do is tell that ape that's working for you to leave me alone. Hmm. Actually, there is something you could do for me, McPherson. Hmm? I thought so. The gorilla's brother is locked up, isn't he? Yes. Roman is a good resource and is the girl's main protection. Without him, let's just say... If you can spring him out of jail, I'll tell the gorilla to leave you alone. Why did he get arrested? It was some sort of incident with the police. He supposedly punched one, I heard. Oh, I know exactly who he punched. So, we have a deal then? Wait, not so fast. Why do you want Peter off your back? I need to talk to the person he's protecting. Ah, Vladana. So she really exists? Yes, she does. Spring Roman from jail, and I will let you talk to her. To be quite honest, I figured you'd be more difficult to convince. McPherson, we both win if you get this killer off the streets. When you catch him, business will return to normal. Now go! You're wasting time. I mean, he got kind of flip-flopped of being like, Oh, you, you want something from me, don't you? And then it was like, no, yeah, it's fine. I believe you. So it turns out Kabita might not be such a bad guy after all. At the very least, he seems to be one of those crooks with a sense of honor. One of those guys who, if you find out what he wants and give it to him, you can actually trust to be honest when dealing with you. It'd be nice if Kabita is as smart as a businessman as I give him credit for. Um, okay. So we're gonna definitely have to go to the jail. Oh, let's go look at this first. I never figured out what that was. It's like a Janus statue of sorts. One of my favorites, the prisoner of Zenda. Anything good? We got a document. Is 
Direct police constable rescues orphans from fire. Constable Kazimir Stasek to be awarded police merit medal. Uh, Prague Daily Monitor, October 29th, 1928. Prague. The extraordinary bravery and timely action of a local police constable saved the lives of two young orphans trapped in a burning building. In the early hours of October 29th, police constable Kazimir Stasek's patrol, patrol was interrupted by cries of alarm coming from the same Trogol orphanage. Right to the scene, Stasek found the building in flames surrounded by bewildered orphans and harried priests. With the fire brigade yet to arrive, Stasek was informed that two children, Slavomir Faktor and Milan Karliak, both seven years of age, remained unaccounted for. I have two fine sons, Constable Stasek reports. Any father would do the same. Constable Stasek found the boys huddled in their dormitory, trapped by flames wreathing the doorway. Wrapping the children in heavy blankets, he carried them to safety, sustaining burns to his hands and face in the process. The children sustained minor burns, and all three were treated for smoke inhalation. Sussex Spears, police captain Arnos Baboda, announced that the Herr Constable would be awarded the Police Merit Medal in recognition of his exceptional bravery. The cause of the fire is yet to be established. Parts of the story originally appeared in Pravo, the Czech language daily. Without hesitation or concern for his own safety, Constable Stasek plunged into the burning building in search of the missing urchins. Hello again, my friend. Ah, Mr. McPherson. What brings you here this fine evening? Well, I need a favor. <laughs> I thought so. What can I do to help? I need you to be on the level with me about the Shiner. What do you mean? Come on, Kaz. What really happened? Why do you ask? The man you arrested yesterday, is he the same man that protects Otakar's girls? Yeah, he is. I thought so. I need this man free, because I can get precious information on the case. Can you help me? Yeah, I can help you. But I'd have to ask a favor in return. I would have been insulted if you didn't ask. What can I do to help? Well, it's uh, sort of embarrassing. You can trust me. It's about the black eye, isn't it? Yeah. The night I arrested Roman, I noticed something missing. My, uh, my medal was gone. You have a medal? Yeah, I got a medal for bravery. I saved some children from the fire that happened a couple of weeks ago. a boy. Congratulations. No, oh, thank you. Anyway, I noticed my medal was gone, so I went back to see Epelina. Why'd you go see her? Well, I, uh... Never mind, I Back gotcha. to see her. She stole it from me. I have no idea why. Maybe she needs the money. But I need that medal back. My wife is getting suspicious about it. It's my pride and joy. And saying I forgot it at the office just won't be good enough when I go home. Please, get it back for me. I love my wife and kids. I don't want to lose them over something so stupid. Relax, my friend. I got you covered. I'll get that medal of yours. Just make sure that you can free Roman for me when I return. Thank you, my friend. I'll see you later. It's the classic. I scratch your back, so you scratch my back, so I scratch somebody else's back that scratches my back in return. Typical adventure game. So. Alright, Park. Talk to her. Oh, you again. Stop wasting my time. Wait a second, will you? You are truly annoying. I have information for you. It's about Roman. Interested? What is it? First of all, you're gonna have to give me the medal you stole from Stasek. Why the hell would I want to do that? I'm mean, I guess he didn't pay you. So you admit it. You did steal his medal. Yes, I did. That son of a bitch didn't yep. pay me, so yeah, I stole his precious medal. Just because he's a cop, he can hump me and leave me without paying? Hell no, not me. Okay, so, what happened? He came to see me when he finally realized that I had it. He started grabbing me and threatened to arrest me. Roman happened to be walking by and he broke up the commotion. He ordered me to go home, so I left. Well, let me finish the story for you. He got arrested for punching Stasek in the face. Now Roman is in jail. So, what do you want from me? I need that medal. Stasek is willing to let Roman out if I get his medal back. 
get it? Of course I do. Okay, listen, everybody wins here. Roman gets out, Stasek gets his medal back, and you... And I get screwed for free. Look, I'll pay you what he owes you, okay? It's not the money. Here, just take the damn thing and get out of here. No, I get, again, you know, it's the principle. Good evening, Milena. And Stasek was a bit of a piece Christmas. of shit for doing it. I'm glad to see you're feeling better. Thank you. If you don't mind me saying so, I really don't think you should be working right now. It's too dangerous. Well, I'm not working. I'm sort of keeping an eye on Apollina. If she leaves with a weirdo, I'll follow them. That's cool. very kind of you. But how can you tell when a client is weird? Trust me, I can tell. Okay, well, I won't distract you any longer. Ada's a very Good. lucky woman. Good evening, Miss Milena. Station. Glad Here to get you your are, medal. Friend, as promised. Ah, oh, thank you. How about your end of the deal? I'll be right back. Here you are, your new friend, Mr. McPherson. Who are you? Let's just say I know your boss. He's waiting for you at his shop. I'll meet you there later. Whoa, thanks for springing me, mister. You're welcome. Well, that concludes our agreement. Thanks a lot, Cass. You're welcome. All right. Now we can go back to the lingerie shop. Oh, can I actually go in here? A locked gate with a car behind it. I'm definitely not going through there. Oh, interesting. Uh, shop. shop, go tell your brother it's okay if McPherson goes to see her. Okay, boss. Well, McPherson, looks like you held up your end of our agreement. I'm sending Roman to talk to his brother, which will conclude my end of the deal. Thank you for getting me out of there. You're welcome. I'll see you soon. And now I've just honored my part of the bargain. You may speak with Vladana any time. I misjudged you, Kabina. No, I don't think so. I have my reasons to protect this girl. Here, before you leave, this might come in handy. Lockpick? Thanks. Are you sure you're not a nice guy after all? No, I'm not. Now get out of here. Oh, yeah, I have a vague memory of this game having lockpicking and it being a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, yes, so bad. No. Archie Junkyard. Come here, my friend. Okay, please. Can't breathe. Let go of him, Peter. You're hurting him. <laughs> I wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. Then just say thank you. Thank you. Again, you're welcome, my very large friend. Gustav, wait. I want to show you something. Stand here and don't cross this line here. Talk to the girl. He only likes raw meat. Okay, what are you? Is that chain coming loose? Uh oh.
If you can't say anything good about men like Kabina is that they're smart, at least a little bit, so you can rely on them to be slightly predictable and at least not get you killed by accident. His goons, on the other hand. One thing that every private eye learns to hate is dogs. The crane seems to be locked. Okay, so we have a locked crane. There's only one interact spot there. The crane seems to be locked. Pincers. My guess is Bladan is in one of those old tramways. The trick is to figure out a way to get to it without getting my ass bitten off by the damn dog. Alright, I see how to do it. As long as the crane is actually working. That's that's the tricky part. Oh, here. It's one of these puzzles. Oh motherfucker. Okay, let's go let's go double check the order before we start doing crazy stuff in here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Straight forward. Let's do this. Then move the four here. Two in the corner. The one up. The three up as well. The four in its proper spot. Let's move this guy up here. Up here, you in your spot. Okay, yeah, we got it. And I'll put the one through. Put the two in the corner. One in its place. And the two in its place. Crane is working. Oh, it's there. Okay. Let's grab this. Drop it here. Let's grab you. Drop it there. Leave. Go ahead and burst those chains open with our pincers. Or I guess they're not pincers, they're cutters. These crates are chained together. I'll need something stronger than my teeth to cut through this. this. And I think, I think, that solving this puzzle and getting to speak with Vodana is gonna whip us back to present day.
And there we go. This way. And just jump from creek to creek. Air, Polyanus. Yeah, hello? Hi, sweetie. Uh, am I bothering you? Not at all. I was just reading something, and I guess I really got into it. Do you want me to call you back? Really, it's okay. What's up? You don't sound too good. I called her. Oh, Samantha? Yes. I need to talk. I'll be right there. Where can I pick you up? At work. Just come down to the morgue. I still have a little work to do before we go. Okay, you take care. I'll see you soon. Bye. Alright, before we go, let's see if we do have to do the meanest puzzle. What's up, Dad? Hey, Dad. Hi, sweetheart. Did you ever read any of Grandad's memoirs? I've read some of them, yes. Did you find something interesting? Yes, I found his memoir from one of his cases. Oh, really? Which one? It's the one in Prague. Did you ever read that one, Dad? You know, sweetheart, some things are better kept buried. Dad, <laughs> answer the question. No, I never read it. I asked him once about what happened in Prague, and I could tell it was a very painful memory. I, I even think it's better for it. you, dude, to show After seeing it. his expression, I never wanted to know what happened there. Did you ever ask Grandma about it? No, I didn't bother either. Like I said before, some things are better left buried. Did you know about Grandma? Yes, I did. Where are you going with this? Dad, I wasn't judging. I just wanted to know if you knew. Weren't you going somewhere? Dad, I was going to meet Claire. Ah, Agent Claire Ashby. She's one of the best in her line of work. I always love it when she's on the stand. I hope everything is okay with her. Yes, she's just having a hard time talking to her daughter. I better get going, Dad. Okay, Pumpkin. Uh, Victoria, I'm sorry... Sorry. No, Dad. I'm the one who should be sorry. I shouldn't have gone there. It's okay, sweetheart. Sorry? Sometimes I forget. It's your job to ask questions. I'll be back soon. Okay, take care. I would assume both of these voice actors are Canadian for some reason. Uh, yeah. There's an exchange there that you should keep in the back of your mind. Where, you know, she just basically went, T did you know about Grandma? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I knew. And she was like, oh, you know, I'm not judging or anything. I'm like, no, yeah, I, that's just, you know, it's, it is. So keep, keep that in the back of your mind. And you can probably intuit. Maybe Dad's trying to send me a message. Uh, I'll do them later. You can try to intuit what ultimately is the point of that conversation. All right, let's go meet Claire at work. Oh, actually, no, before we do, let me make a save. I should have really done it before the uh, that chat, but eh. Uh, there we go.
Uh, Morin. The... What? Sweetie! What the hell are you doing? Me? I thought you'd... Oh my god. Go look at the security cameras. Uh oh Was the killer right in the FBI's... offices? And if so, how did they do it? Bold move. What's her SUV have a uh, top window that is like a tank? Step off the edge. Yep, you sh should have probably stepped off the edge. Almost had him. Almost. Chapter 3. Samantha called. Claire wants to talk later. I forget it sometimes, sometimes that Samantha is closer to my age than her mother is. I wonder how she feels about Claire treating me like another daughter. The daughter who understands about her work. The pursuit. God fucking damn it. So close. I had him. That arrogant bastard. Taunting us when I find... Taunting us. When I find him, I'm gonna make him eat the damn picture. I don't care if he did let me live. He doesn't get points for that. Of course, I need to figure out why he didn't kill me when he had the chance. It might be important. That's your last mistake, you son of a bitch. Hey. Hey, are you okay? What happened? Yeah, I'm okay. I ran after him. The son of a bitch got away. Well, the important thing is that you're okay. Hey, about... Forget it. It can wait. Are you sure? Hey, Browning can wait. Really, sweetie, it's okay. Go. So, what happened on your end? I never thought my own lab would become a crime scene. The suspect left this, a photo of a young woman, and wrote NEXT on the back. I need to send this to the lab for further analysis. Where was it? He put it inside her. He tore the stitches open just below the sternum and slipped it inside. Ew, gross. Do the others know? 
Yes, I called upstairs and Todd answered. I told him what I know. He's expecting you and he didn't sound too happy. I can imagine. Okay, going upstairs to deal with Todd. Okay, I'll fix the mess down here. I'll tell you if anything turns up. We didn't get any anything new to read or anything, right? Yeah, no. How did we get into the morgue in the first place? And I don't know that there's a satisfying answer to that, honestly. Thinking back to who I know the killer to be, it's like, huh. Make a lot of sense. Hello? Hi, honey. Oh, hi, Richard. You left the gallery in a rush and you never called back, so I got a little worried. Is everything okay? Oh, yes, I'm fine. I'm sorry about that. It's just we found another victim and some really weird stuff is going on. Oh, God. How are you holding up? I'm very tired. I'm in dire need of unwinding, like we did two nights ago. True, that was very relaxing. I have an idea. Come down here, and I can show you the new exhibit, and after we can go unwind. Very tempting, but I have to decline. Aw, oh, why? Well, I have to go get yelled at by my boss. Anyways, why are you so excited about this exhibit? I've never seen you so into your work. Oh, it's because I sort of discovered this artist. Actually, it wasn't just me. Some people from the University of Chicago's Fine Arts Department helped a little. We discovered him at an auction. He's from L.A., but originally from Chicago. His name is Mark Ackerman. The department and I purchased most of his pieces, but we're still looking for some. Anyway, we got enough to make an exhibit. Richard, I'm sorry. I really have to go. Oh, sorry. You know how I get started. <laughs> yes, I do. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, honey. You be careful now. I will. Bye. Bye. I was trying to find information about uh, the voice actress for Victoria. Her name is Sarah Lager. Um, she has very few voice acting roles in her career. The information about her is very sparse. I mean, that story is, is a giveaway. It, she has to be Canadian. She also voices as Ada. What the hell is going on? What's this I hear about suspects breaking into the morgue? Agent McPherson and Detective Miller, I want to see you both in my office, now! And while you're at it, one of you can get me a cup of coffee. Victoria, can you... Don't sweat it, Miller. I'll cover you. Anyways, you have the report to finish. I'll even get his damn coffee. Next on Chicago Vice, Agent McPherson gets the boss a coffee. Miller, don't make this any harder than it already is. By the way, I have some good news. Come and see me after. Can you give me a preview? It's about the data correlation. I think we might have something. You didn't tell, or... No, I wanted to check with you first. Okay, I'll see you after. All right. This is used to lift fingerprints. Can we grab any of this stuff yet? No. All right, let's go get uh, the boss's mug from the evidence room. Coffee. Oh, 
he chokes on it. Here's your coffee. Thank you. Why don't you get yourself a damn cup of coffee? You In what baby. new way have I pissed you off this time? I distinctly remember asking for both you and Miller. Oh, never mind. I just hope you haven't forgotten that he is your partner. No, I haven't. Okay. Now tell me what happened tonight. The perp entered, I assume, through the garage. Claire already filled me in. I want to know what happened outside. I pursued the perp with the 4x4 into the alleyway. He climbed up a fire escape to the rooftop. When I got up there, he gave me a surprise blow to the shoulder with a 2x4. He got away through the other fire escape. Shots fired? Yes, one. Any leads so far in the case? Besides what the next victim looks like? No, not really. We're not sure of that. Claire is running it through the database to see if we get a hit. Is that it? Because I'd like to get back to work now. Consider yourself on probation. What? Why? I've seen it before. Agents get too involved in their case and lose it. I'm losing it now? I think you're just pissed because we look like schmucks on the news. It's all about image, isn't it? No, this is about your recent behavior. I'm worried about the progress of the case and I think you need a break. This is bullshit. You're only proving my point. You know, Browning? I usually get kissed before I get fucked. Damn. Damn. Alright, let's go talk to Miller in the meantime. So, is everything okay? Not really. I'm on probation and he'll probably take over the case. Oh, crap. I'm sorry. It's okay. Been there, done that, and bought the t-shirt. Hey, so what happened downstairs? We think the killer broke into the morgue and left us a picture of the next victim. You're kidding, right? I kid you not. A bold SOB, I'll give him that. You should go down and take a look at the picture. Claire needs to do a few tests on it and send it off to the labs. Do you think it's safe to go down there? Sure it is. Okay, I'll go have a look. What's this big lead you were telling me about? I did what you asked. I correlated the info on victims 4 and 5. I got something, but it may be nothing. Try me. You've said that the last two victims probably knew our perp because he covered their face. Well, I got a name that's common to both victims. A Vaklav Kolar. Also, I tried linking this guy to victims 1, 2, and 3, but no go. How did you get the name Vaclav Kolar? I read Claire's report on the fifth victim. In it, she added a picture that was found in the victim's purse. On the picture, there was the victim, a girl, and a guy. The guy reminded me of someone. He's actually one of the people I interviewed for the fourth murder. He was her tutor at the university. I went back to read my own report, and it's the same guy. I'm sure of it. Any relationship between the fourth and fifth victims? As far as I can tell, they didn't know each other. But they had this guy in common. Maybe he deserves a second interview? Definitely. I'll go alone. He's seen you before, so it might make things go smoother. Make him less nervous. Okay, and I'll give Kolar a visit. I sent the address to your 4x4's NAVCOM. If I have the chance, I'll go interview the latest victim's friends. Maybe I can talk to the other girl on the photo. Good idea. Good job, Miller. Uh, should we go back and talk to Claire? Pictures from the fifth crime scene. Yeah, let's go back down the morgue. Snoop around just a little bit. I wouldn't want to be accidentally missing something.
God, it stinks in there. I don't have anything for you now. Come back later. Okay. Alright. Campus. University of Chicago. First victim who worked there, numbers three and four were students. If that's what a theory or killer knew the fourth one, and the university looks like a good place to check out. Can't talk to her. I guess I need to go directly upstairs to Oslaw? I already forgot the, the guy's name. Who is it? Agent McPherson, FBI. I have a few questions I'd like to ask you, if you have the time. I have time for the pretty agent. May I come in? Sure. Cool. Jeez, sorry I asked. What? Oh, nothing. Just thinking out loud. Oh, okay. Did you know a Natalie Kenworth? Yes, I did. So I imagine you also know that she was murdered about a month ago. Yes, and I already talked to a police officer about her. Yeah, I know, but I would appreciate if you could remind me. How did you know her? Friend? Just a classmate? Were you intimate? I was her tutor. She was studying in criminology, and I was helping her with some of her classes. She came here often. Do you know Cynthia Woods? Cynthia Woods? No, I don't think so. Are you sure? Maybe a photo would help. Oh, yes, I have seen her before. She's my neighbor's friend. I saw her at a party. That picture was taken there. A student in criminology, huh? Did you ever get Professor Pratt? No, but I know him. I've had several conversations about weird unsolved cases. Does he still have bad B.O.? B.O.? Body odor. In other words, he stinks. <laughs> yes, he still does. Th this guy seems to me like the kind of guy that would also have B.O. So you're not close to Cynthia? No, she's more my neighbor's friend. I think I saw her twice in all, at the party and once in the hallway. Uh, why? She was found brutally murdered in an abandoned apartment building. You don't think that... Hey, I'm dude, always dude, in here working that, that on my thesis. I never Korea. go out. I went to Mia's party because she invited me. I think she invited me so I wouldn't complain about the noise. That was a bad call, Victoria. You shouldn't have revealed that you were inquiring into a different murder. Mia's the other girl in the picture? Yes, she's my neighbor. Your thesis, what's the subject? I'm doing it on a serial murder case called the Perlovka Ripper. It happened in the late 20s. Well, you don't say. Are you familiar with the case? You could say that, yes. Do you mind if I take a look at it? Sure, I'll even print you up a copy. Okay, can I have the copy now? Sure, I'll be right back. Now's my chance. I should swipe something to get prints. All right, what can I swipe? Bottle.
this will do nicely. Oh, this dude you definitely are. has BO. Thanks a lot. I'll be sure to read it. I'd really appreciate your input if you ever have the time. Will do. You're not planning on leaving the country. No. Fine. Thanks for your cooperation, and I'll keep in touch. Pentawan, he thinks our grandpa uh, is the guy who did it. Without remorse, unsolved serial killings, an examination of the 1931 Chicago serial killings and their relation to the 1929 Pervlovka Ripper killings in Prague, Czech Republic, by Vaclav Kalara. Research papers submitted in partial fulfillment to the requirements for the Master of Arts degree in criminology approved six semester credits, Department of Psychology, the University of Chicago, February 2004. Uh, I intend to examine the case rep reports of both the 1929 Perlovka Ripper's killings in Prague, Czech Republic, and the 1931 Chicago serial killings in order to establish commonality of method and by examining the circumstances surrounding the murders, including police files, coroner's reports, and secondary documents, including newspaper coverage, which proved unusually sparse considering the sensationalistic nature of the killings, and the journal of Jerry Skalnik, senior investigator assigned to the case in Prague. Well, what I've gleaned from the FBI archives, I believe I have I've identified the murderer, Gustav McPherson, private investigator and American expatriate, was president in Prague during the killings. He was also in Chicago at the time of the 1931 slayings. Further research into Mr. McPherson's background revealed that he fled New York in the winter of 1922, following allegations by the city's police force that he may have been responsible for an unsolved homicide involving a former client. While in Paris, McPherson apparently worked as a painter until he was drawn into L'Affaire White, the investigation of a double homicide at the Hotel Orfe in the autumn of 1925. This case is the content of the first game in the Loosely series called Postmortem. Um, interestingly, uh, one of the victims, Faye Johnson, registered under the alias Ruby White, uh, may well have been known to McPherson as a result of an investigation that prompted him to live in New... Oh, to New York. McPherson then left Paris, apparently in order to evade the authorities, who may have identified him as a suspect in the Hotel Orfe killings. He made his way to Prague, where he abandoned his painting and resumed working as a private investigator. Following the last of the Prague killings, a prostitute by the name of Ida Skalikova, whose company McPherson was known to solicit, McPherson fled once again, a step ahead of local police who had a warrant for his arrest. There were no more killings in Prague following his departure, only to reappear in Chicago in 1931, followed by three more murders. That's, uh, spoilers what's gonna happen to poor Ida. McPherson subsequently resumed his career as a private investigator and does not appear to have been a suspect in these killings. If accepted, I intend to present a convincing case for McPherson as the Perlovka Perluf Ripper and the perpetrator of the Chicago murders. Furthermore, I intend to construct a detailed psychological profile of McPherson in an attempt to better understand what drove him to commit such ghastly crimes and why, typically for serial killers, according to current theories, he then apparently stopped killing. I will comment on it. You know, it's, it's up to you to decide whether maybe we're dealing with an unfaithful narrator. Um, Maybe Gus is the person responsible for those killings. Hello? Hey, it's me. What's up? Nothing much. I was just calling to say I was on my way to visit Victim 5's roommate. Maybe she can tell us more about Vaklav and the other girl in the picture. No need. I know who she is. She's Vaklav's neighbor. Actually, I just finished the interview. How did it go? He's harmless. Anyways, he doesn't fit the profile. But I did nick a little something with Prince. I'm taking it over to Claire for comparisons. Great idea, but we can't use it, though, if he checks out. I know. Call me if you get anything interesting out of the roommate. Will do. Bye. Bye. Let's go back to the office and do the prints.
Alright, I guess let's see. Grab the bottle. This is used to lift fingerprints. This is used to lift fingerprints. Yeah, that, that's... This is used to lift fingerprints. This is used to lift fingerprints. Uh, okay, okay, how do I do it? This is used to lift fingerprints. This is used to lift fingerprints. This is used to lift fingerprints. Maybe there's a spot I have to do it in or something. Put that to clear first. Hi, Claire. Hey. Can you check this bottle out for prints and compare them to the partials you got on victims four and five? I don't think we'll hit anything, but I'm curious. Curiosity killed the cat. But a cat has nine lives. Let's stop the cliches before someone gets shot. Can you at least extract the prints for me? Once extracted, the computer can compare the partials. Sure. Remind me where the stuff is? The powder's upstairs on my desk near the plastifying machine, along with the brush and lifting tape. When you're done, just give me the print and I'll handle the rest down here. Okay, that's, I'll be That's right what back. I was trying to do, but I guess game logic, huh? Okay, let's go right back up. That's the thing that annoys me a little bit sometimes. The flag for me being able to interact with the prince should not be me having talked to Claire. It should be me having the bottle in my inventory. But anyway. Keep it. This will do nicely for prints. We got it. Bring it downstairs for Claire. I'm all done with the prints. I'll have the results soon. Where are you off to now? Back to my dad's. I've got some reading to do. Well, okay. I'll call you if I get something. Okay, thanks a lot. Do we get anything from her? No. Right. Let's go to our dad's and go through... The most obnoxious puzzle ever. Especially for like a 13 year old.
So I was. It's also funny that the the criminology student didn't go like, "Oh, Agent McPherson." Wait, what, McPherson? Like, like, like the hey, serial killer? Hi, Dad. When do you think you can do those cookies? Oh, jeez. Sorry, Dad, I forgot. I have time now. Oh, it's okay. It's not a problem, Dad. A promise is a promise. Sorry. Really did not do anything to, like, uh, kill that uh, Canadian accent, huh? So here's the thing. Gingerbread man. One cup of love. Half a cup of generosity, two cups of commitment, one cup of sweetness, half a cup of integrity, one tablespoon of romance, one teaspoon of sensuality, one common sense. In a bowl, cream together, generosity, sweetness, and love to give your man a sweetheart. To give him devotion, simply sift together commitment, sensuality, and romance. Blend devotion to his sweetheart. Finally, add intelligence, a mix of common sense and integrity, and beat it with the rest to make your perfect man. Give him a form and place it in the oven. Remember not to overcook. This is just a recipe. And they don't... There's nowhere in the game, ever, do they have a thing to tell you, oh, this is what love is, this is what commitment is, this is what this thing is. You just, you just gotta cook. You, you, just, you, just, you just gotta make, make cookies. You get milk. Molasses, ginger cinnamon, butter, eggs, flour, and brown sugar. So, generosity, sweetness, and love are wet ingredients, right? Because they say cream together, generosity. So, I'm going to guess... Let's uh, get our commitment. Centrality and romance. Alright, so. This is, I think, half a cup, and this is a cup. Yeah. So we need half a cup of molasses. Cup of milk. And a cup of butter. Now, how do I, how do I sift? I need two cups of flour. I'm a little worried about the molasses. I think the molasses was not the right call. I think it should have been butter, sugar, and milk. But yeah, in fact, you know what? Let, let's, let's just retry it. So, let's go one cup sugar, one cup butter, half a cup milk, blend, two cups of flour, Now the question is, we need one tablespoon of romance and one teaspoon of centrality. 
I'm gonna guess it's a tablespoon of cinnamon and a teaspoon of ginger. All right, blend it again. Now we need to add one egg and half a cup of molasses. No, this doesn't taste right. Okay, let's try let's try doing it again in the same way, but swapping the um the cinnamon and the ginger. I guess the gingerbread man, not a cinnamon bread man. Do we still wanna do Let's try swapping also the milk and the butter. Let's let's do one cup of milk. One cup of sugar and half a cup of butter. Blend. Two cups of flour. Uh, and then a tablespoon of ginger. Teaspoon of cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Mix. One egg. Half a cup of molasses. Mix. And then you just pop it in the oven, right? Please be right, please be right, please be right. This tastes yeah. right. Dad, the cookies are in the oven. Now, here's the thing about this puzzle. Again, there is no hint of it anywhere whatsoever. The way you solve this puzzle is by knowing how to cook a cake. Which is insane, you know. I mean, after you you've done a little bit of cooking, you know that the main ingredients of any kind of desserts are butter, flour, sugar, and potentially milk, right? And so then you have to, in your mind, be like, okay, what's the right balance of ingredients? And you know, there are some hints in there in the terms that you know you're not gonna sift milk. You're not going to sift butter, right? You're going to sift the flour. But still, being able to understand what is what is literally just down to knowing how to cook it, which is insane. Um, all right, let's 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 make a save here. All right, uh, I guess now that we've uh, made the cookies, it's time to go and uh, read some more of Grandpa's story. No. Where's my room? kid was badly scarred. The killer stabbed her seven times before she finally escaped to the streets. Odakar's boy Roman found her and brought her here. She's only 16, for God's sake. I promised her that I'd help her in any way I could if she would help me find the killer. So she opened up and told me her story. Can I keep this? Yes. I'm Gustav McPherson. I'm a private eye hired to help find and arrest the person who attacked you. 
and Vladana Tominova. I haven't said that in a long time. I'm usually just Vladana. Do you feel up to a few questions? I can always come back later. No, that's okay. You can ask me questions if you wish, but I'm afraid I won't be much help. I thought she was stabbed seven times. Where was she stabbed? Besides the sketch you gave me, can you describe your attacker with a, a little more detail? The top hat was black, and so was his cloak. The mask was silver white. It had motifs on it, but nothing I can describe accurately. When were you attacked? About two months ago. Where did it happen? It happened near the park. I was coming back from Mark's studio, and... Take your time. It was very foggy that evening. I heard someone walking in front of me. I could hear his footsteps getting closer and closer. I stopped when I suddenly saw a silhouette appear behind the fog. A man in a top hat wearing a dark cloak was standing in front of me. I froze. I couldn't move. I was absolutely terrified. What happened next? He approached slowly. I noticed that he was wearing a mask when he walked out of the fog. He looked like death itself. I hadn't noticed how close he had come to me. He took a swift swing at me. As he did, I let out a scream. At first I thought he had missed me, but then I noticed the metallic taste in my mouth. I put my hand to my face and looked at it. It was full of blood. Then I felt a cold sensation in my chest, followed by a sharp pain. Then another. Then another. I screamed what seemed to be my last breath. I fainted after that. I woke up in here. He'd stabbed me over and over. It's a miracle I'm still alive. I guess somehow I missed any uh, vital arteries. How did you end up here in this joint? Roman found me. He was the one who scared off the killer. He heard me screaming, so he ran in the direction of the commotion. I don't know much about that. You should ask him. You mentioned earlier that you left Mark's place the night you were attacked. Who's Mark? Mark is a local artist. Most of the girls know him. I think he's painted all of us at least once. Was Mark acting strange that night, or was it business as usual? Everything was fine until Inspector Skalnik showed up. Inspector Skalnik talked to Mark. What did they talk about? I didn't really pay attention to what they were saying, but they were arguing about something. When Skalnik left, Mark told me to get dressed and leave. He told me he wasn't feeling well enough to continue. Was he angry? He was, but he made a good effort not to show it. So I left quietly without saying a word besides good night. In general, Mark was always nice. Yes, always cordial, very polite and well-behaved. He would give us double what we charge a client for the time we spent posing. It was a lot better work, let me tell you. I only posed for him once, and I wish I could do it again. Where can I find Mark? His studio is in front of the canal near the old wall. Well, thanks for answering my pesky questions. You're welcome. Take care of yourself, Vladena. And you be careful, too. Thanks. I will. All right. Let's see what we have here. First of all, we should save. We couldn't save until now, but make our start of chapter save. It's interesting how, uh, because you're theoretically playing as Gus, right? You don't have access to the chapter one and chapter three summaries. That's, that's a nice little touch. Uh, chapter 4. Valena wasn't lying to me, but she wasn't telling me the whole truth either. Everybody lies. Some people lie without knowing it. Some to protect themselves, some to protect someone else, and some people lie to play an angle. Some people lie just for the heck of it. Valena isn't in the last category, but she isn't in the first either. Get you to kill her.
suspiciously similar to the killer that we've actually been investigating as Victoria. All right, looks like they got the dog under control. I see you've solved the dog problem. Yeah, he's a very good, but very dangerous dog. What is this place exactly? This is our inheritance. Great, isn't it? Peter and me took care of this place after our father died. How'd you get mixed up with a guy like Odakar, if you don't mind my asking? When we were younger, uh, Peter and me had a small operation going. Petty theft was our main business. This place is perfect to hide stolen goods. Anyways, Peter and me would get arrested from time to time. Suffice it to say, the thieving wasn't going good. We're not exactly good at blending into the crowd. Do you guys ever wear masks? Masks? Yeah, to cover your face. To hide your identity? No, we never did. Now, why didn't I think of that? Masks, huh? I'm sorry I interrupted you. So how'd you hook up with Odakar? Oh, yeah, well... We decided to work for him because our business wasn't going well and we needed money. Masks. <laughs> we should have worn masks. And? So, Autocar offered to pay us good money to protect certain investments he had in the neighborhood. And that's pretty much it. Did you ever think of doing something else? Well, yeah, of course. No one wants to do what we do. We do it because we have no other choice. What I really wanted to do is open up a club. Not a joint, but a classy place like I've seen in pictures of New York. Ah, I know what you mean. Huge classy joints where you have a host at the door that escorts you to a table and lots of different acts on stage from across the country. Yeah. Also, a, a small orchestra that plays jazz music. Well, you never know. It could happen, right? Uh, I would doubt it. Yeah, who am I kidding? It's a dream itself just getting into one of them. Well, it was nice meeting you, Roman. I hope our paths cross again. It was nice to meet you, too. And, uh, thanks for getting me out of jail. Think nothing of it. I love the part where he goes like, Oh, mask! We should have worn masks! He's the thinking one of the group, you know? Is that Big Bertha? Let's talk to him as well. Hi, Peter. Hi! Seems you got away from raw meat. Do you scare your new friends like that all the time? I'm sorry for what happened. The chain doesn't usually break. It was funny it's a, it's to see your face, ritual. though. <laughs> I always do the same gag to the new guys. What do you do for Odakar besides roughing people up? I hurt people that Autocar doesn't like, like I did to you. Yes, well, that's what I meant. Besides hurting people, what do you do for them? No besides, I just hurt them. You're not very quick. <laughs> but you make me laugh. <laughs> okay, I guess that's my cue, Peter. I'll leave you to your hurting people. But I think you should cut down on the raw meat gag. I need a new pair of shorts. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I have to fix the chain. Yep, you do. I'm not entirely sure where, where this leaves me, though. No sketch. I guess we can go see... Well, there's no other known victims, right? But we can 
they'll ask the prostitutes if they've seen anybody that kind of sort of looks like this or go to this oh duh go talk to mark that seems like a good idea Hello. Hello. Uh oh. Hello. Yes. Sorry about this. I knocked and the door opened, so I came in. That's quite all right. And you are? I'm Gus McPherson. I'm a private detective hired to help out with the local murder. Really? A genuine private dick, and I can tell by your accent you're American too. This adds so much to the authenticity of the stereotype. The name is Mark Ackerman. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Are you British? No, I'm a yike, just like you are. The accent is due to living in England throughout most of my childhood. You see, Daddy is an ambassador. I sort of picked it up along the way. I hardly notice it anymore. Mark? Qui yes. Stay in your position, Napolina, please. Ooh. Do you have time for a few questions? Apolina speaks French. Well, just a few, yes, of course. It's sort of exciting, this private detective stuff. This was a while back, but do you remember when Inspector Skalnik came here to talk to you? Actually, according to rumor, you had an argument with him. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And do you mind telling me what it was about? Not at all. He accused me of being, as you put it so eloquently earlier, the local problem. He accused you of being the killer. Yes, can you believe the gall? I mean, really, me, a killer. It's totally preposterous. And why is it preposterous? Did he elaborate on his theory? Not really. He only confronted me. He didn't present any proof or real evidence to support his allegations. I'm afraid you'll have to ask him about his little hypothesis. I'm sorry, but I have to ask this. Did you ever employ these women other than for modeling? I was always professional, Mr. McPherson. I never touched those women. Again, I apologize, but I have to ask these types of questions. It's quite all right, I understand. Marc! J'en ai marre! Well, I believe that's my cue. Yes, indeed. I must get back to work before... Well, before... Yes, I know. Thanks for answering my questions. Can I come back later, maybe when you're less busy? Certainly. As I mentioned before, your best bet is to talk to Inspector Skalnik. Well, again, my thanks. You're quite welcome. And good luck. I wonder if Apollina speaking French there is just like... A bug where they left the uh, French language. Um, basically, they, they forgot to change the audio files from the French language. Oh, hey, this is the lingerie place, isn't it? I don't know that I have anything to tell him. I shouldn't but... bother him. Okay. Oh. All right, I guess uh, let's go back to the park and talk to Milena. See if she posts for Mark. I still think you shouldn't be out here. Thank you, but I will be fine. Or not. I guess we should go and um, ask Skalnik about why he suspected Mark. That's probably our best... Uh, this course of action right now. Uh, uh, where's the cops? Police. That's locked. Hey, friend. Mr. McPherson. What can I do for you? I'd like to talk to your boss. Is he in now? 
As a matter of fact, he is. Are you going to pester him with annoying questions? How'd you know? A oh, wild guess. Go right in, my friend. It's up the stairs at the end of the hall to your right. Thanks. that we can uh, snoop I think that we can snoop here where nobody's watching that looks nothing like him jail right Inspector Skalnik? If it isn't the knight in shining armor. <laughs> you son of a... What do you want, McPherson? I was on my way out. I'd like to ask you about Mark, the local artist. What about him? Well, I thought I remember you saying that you had no suspects related to these crimes. And this charming gentleman says otherwise. What did he say, exactly? He said that you accused him of the crimes. May I ask why? Yes, I considered him a suspect. Wouldn't you? It doesn't matter what I think. That's all the time I have for you. Oh. Fine. Can you at least lend me the files on the other victims? No, McPherson. Why not? I just want to consult them. Hey, I thought we were working to... No, we are not. I work for the mayor, not the whores. Well, now, it seems we work for the same kind of people, except my clients have character and honesty. <laughs> this concludes our Classic. conversation. I have business elsewhere. Oh, uh, we are so sneaking in. Thing tells me to oh come on I have to manage a way up uh what can I hmm all right, so we kind of need, we clearly need something to uh, attach our rope somehow. But I'm not sure. I never figured out what that was. What or where I could find the thing that I need for it. Oh, shoot. It's a different interact I point. Have to manage a way up. Yeah, I don't have anything. Uh, let's go back to the junkyard. Whatever we need is probably located in there. This is going to be one of the downsides of the game is that 
the interactable objects are not clearly labeled. I need to fix the chain, raw meat chain. I wonder why it broke. Maybe it's because you did it too many times before. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, 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 anything here? No, no retractables. What's the name of the boat? The Pequod. I think that's a reference to Moby Dick. I think. Is that Big Bertha? Oh. Maybe this? Maybe I can build some bookshelves with those. Hell yeah. Maybe I can build some bookshelves with those. Oh man, really? No, you're you're not gonna grab one. Wait, how do I face oh, this way. Does the summary say anything? Lipper Love Car Ripper. Talk about appearances being deceiving. Mark Ackerman's studio was a wreck, a real dive, but there's no denying the power of his talent. One or two of his paintings had an immediate reaction on me. They went straight to my gut. Well, actually a bit lower. The man himself was a bit phony with all this talk about how interesting it was to meet a detective. Or maybe I'm just jealous because I'd love to trade places with him. And now Skalnik's acting the way his type usually does with people in my line of work. He clammed up completely. I should have known the cooperation wouldn't last. But it doesn't matter. If he thinks he's better than me, all the means he's going to long for us to meet me. Oh, lockpicking guide. When we get to lockpicking, which I'm sure will happen soon, we'll, we'll read through it. I still can't believe I didn't think of wearing a mask. Hey, your secret is safe with me. It's just a gargantuan detail. It could happen to anyone. What if I went back up to the crane controls? Is there something in there I can use? No, okay. Junkyard is a bust. Are we trying to go talk to Mark again? And that we've interacted with Skalnik, maybe he is free? I'm a little stumped because this game doesn't usually have a lot of, um, Inventory management things. You kind of just follow the flow of the game and you're able to solve the puzzles that you see. I'd better let him paint Apollina. You never know, she might rip his head off. All right, so it's not here. So maybe the old church? Maybe there's some stuff I can gather here or talk to Coroner again. I don't need to talk to him. Anyways, I don't want to rip out my vocal cords just for idle chit chat.
I don't see where there would be anything in the burn neighborhood. This reminds me of the Madison Avenue arsonist case I worked on. But the guy's not there, he's working. Alright, so this is also a bust. Oh. Maybe in a little alleyway. We kind of walked in here and didn't really do anything. I guess there's a sewer grade, which we might need later. She doesn't have anything else to say to me. This... Here there was just uh I like this statue. It reminds me of Ida. No, no, okay. Seriously, Dad, there would be something here at the shore. I guess we never really looked at the far side, but... Oh! No time to go fishing. I have things to do. Or not. But I guess good to know that there's a boat around here. So the only thing is maybe there's something inside the police station that I can use? If we can't spot anything, uh, but then I guess I'll just look up a walkthrough. I guess, no, it's, it's not a huge game, right? We've explored all the locations that we have. Uh, yeah, we've gone through all of them. There's either something obvious I'm missing, or the pixel hunt is just like, you know, I, I thought, oh, let's just take these cans and use them. Oh. Well, no, I guess. to manage a way up yeah no this this interaction is just for this this thing one of my favorites the prisoner of Zenda hey Kaz I need another favor what can I do? I need to get some files from Skalnik's office. Can you let me in? I'm afraid I can't do that, my friend. That could mean my job. Ah, oh, come on. For old time's sake. No, really. I can't help you. But maybe... Maybe the workers on the side of the building can help you? All right. Thanks for the tip. Have a nice evening. No, yeah, I mean, I, I had gotten as much. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's time for a walkthrough. Alright, we are in... Shh. 
chapter four. Oh, here. That's what we were missing all along. I could have probably been, like, roaming around for like two hours before understanding what I was supposed to do there. Alright, we're in the office. Get a bunch of keys. Seems dangerous, but uh, we don't care. Oh, I guess we need the keys to open a cabinet. Bring picture, picture. All right, uh, let's see what we got. Okay, there was a victim in the burn neighborhood, which we are gonna go and examine. Uh, the bridge was the first one, I think. Oh no, I guess, well, I mean, we were there at the bridge, right? I guess maybe the victim was in a different spot. Uh, okay. I don't know which one of these we've already read or not, but... Uh, victim, known as Sasha. Uh, investigating officer, Jerry Skalnik. Uh, Constable Stasek awoke me in the early hours of dawn. He informed me of a murdered young woman. We rushed to a crime scene in alleyway in the Perlovka area. I was very disappointed when I realized that the victim was in fact a common street whore. Seems that Constable Stasek is easily impressed and was made overly anxious by this event. This was probably a message sent by Otokar Kubina's men. However, I've never seen a message so brutal before. The woman was gutted and stabbed repeatedly. It seemed a bit excessive even for Kubina. Found the victim's right hand a strange ring. I sent it to a local jeweler in hopes of uncovering information about it. The ring may hold a clue to the killer's identity. Unfortunately, the jeweler has misplaced the ring and he has assured me that it is lost. Witnesses. Uh, Ida Skalikova was the one who found the victim and informed Constable Stasek. For the bridge. Nadia Burkowski. Uh, opinion, death to repeated stabbing, followed by evisceration with a large blade. Uh, evisceration was post-mortem, typical of offensive wounds. I think this one we already read. I guess not. I was contacted by Constable Stace Stasek, who requested that I examine the murder scene. The victim was found on a bench at the base of the Charles Bridge, gutted. The victim, a known prostitute, appeared to have been dead for some hours. A relative lack of blood present at the scene shows that the victim has transported there following the killing. I found no useful blueprints in the vicinity. The victim had been robbed, the whether by the killer or a later thief has not been determined. In the park, Annika Vitti. Death was due to her throat being cut. The victim had her trachea and carotid artery severed by a single deep slash with a very sharp knife. The lack of defensive wounds suggests that she was taken from behind, uh, her throat cut before she had a chance to react. The wound was then stabbed repeatedly and then eviscerated. Uh, she was killed where she was found. Well, I guess this one we already read. I was walking home, I've spent the night in the office and crossed through Vitkov Park. In the early hours of the morning, I discovered the body of a young woman, nearly decapitated and gutted, lying at the foot of the statue. Clearly beyond my help, I searched the area for clues before summoning constables to canvas the area and searching witnesses that take away the body. Alright. Before, let's go to the burn neighborhood.
go examine the murder scene here. Alright, so... I don't see anything unusual. I don't see anything unusual. What's unusual about this? I guess the level of the water here? That bath was empty at the time. This message was carved recently. Someone is leaving breadcrumbs. The slut knows. All right. Not as transformative as I would have wanted, but I guess that's all we get. Oh, hey, the coachman. With Ida. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Didn't we talk about you staying at home safely, behind a bolted door? Yes, we did, but we also talked about me going to see the doctor. Ah, uh, yes, I remember that. So what did the doc say? Did he find the problem? Well, yes, he did. So, what's wrong? Can I ask you a very serious question? Okay, now I'm worried. What is it? How serious are we? How serious? Well, uh, why do you ask? Just answer the question. Because she's preggers. Where is this going? Do you love me? Yes, of course I love you. Actually, love is too small a word. I lure you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> I'm pregnant. Really? Yes, really. That's why I've been sick for the last couple of weeks. I see. What do you want to do? Well, there's only one thing we can do. Which is? Let's get married. Really? L let's do it in New York. I have some friends and family that can help us get started. Oh, Gus, you're wonderful. All right. This was a weird, um, like, interlude. It's like, oh, we're looking at this victim. The victim was here. But I don't know that there's anything... I don't see anything unusual. be unusual what's what's different there are three benches the benches are different looks like the benches have been changed now where are the old ones they have to be at the junkyard Junkyard. Uh, 
let's talk to him, see if he knows. Hey, Peter. Hello, Gustav. I like your name. It reminds me of my father. Oh, your father's name was Gustav? No, Michael. I can see why sure. you think that. Anyways, I need to ask you a question. Did you guys ever receive some old public benches? Hmm. Yeah, we did. They're right over here. There you are. Thank you, my very large friend. <laughs> you make me laugh. And it's a good thing I do. I'd hate to be on your bad side. Actually, I know what that's like. Oh. He had yet another ring. I don't know if there's anything else. Uh, uh, where does that leave me, though? I hate picking up breadcrumbs. The message the slut knows has been carved into the wood recently, which leads me to believe the killer is playing a game. I don't really have a choice but to play along. What other choice do I have? As long as I can first see the trap ahead, I'll be fine. Killer's victim have all been prostitutes. Does he have something against them? This might seem to indicate some kind of plan at work. Maybe he just hates women and red light ladies are the easiest for him to hunt. Everything he does is a clue about him, and the more I can figure out, the closer I am to nailing this bastard. I don't know what's worse, expecting that things are going to turn out badly or being right when they do. The orphanage, I knew it was going to come back to haunt me. First the mysterious coachman, then Stasek, and it turns out they have been the site of one of the murders. Maybe now it's time to go talk to Mark. We're gonna end the stream soon because it's been two hours, but I would like to end on a... Uh, at least having a direction of what to do and where to go. Strange. No one's there. Ooh. Strange. No one's there. No? No luck picking? Back to the police station, maybe? Thanks. I got what I needed to continue. Anything else I can do for you? No, not right now, anyway. Oh, if no one's there, where's Apollina? Let's go to the park. Uh-oh. Hello again. Hello, Mr. McPherson. Can you help me out with something? Of course. I want you to take a look at this picture. Do you remember what happened that day? Yes, I remember. How can I forget it? I'm the one who found Catalina. Inspector Skelnick asked me a few questions. At that particular time, was there something out of the ordinary? Something you might have seen that struck you as odd? Or maybe something you know about the area that no one else does? Well, the only thing I saw that seemed out of place is that Inspector Skelnick threw something into the sewers. Did you see what it was? No. He turned his back and he let something drop. I saw it fall between his legs. It was something shiny because it caught my eye. Well, thanks a lot for your help. You're welcome. I'm sorry, but what did Skalnik do again? He threw something in the sewer. I didn't see what it was. Okay, thanks. 
I guess we're talking about the original murder, which is not the same as the one, the bridge that we just went to. I think? Yeah, sure. Sure is different than bridge. Now, why would Skalnik throw something in the sewer? No time to go fishing. I have things to do. Wait, it was this murder we're talking about, right? This is the one that Melina witnessed. Unless there's a different sewer access from up top. here. Oh, I can go this way. An old lavatory. No one's used it since, well, from the looks of it, I'd say since the Romans. But I can't get there. I want to take a look at this picture. Remember what happened that day? At a particular time, was there something out of the ordinary? Something you might have seen? Turn this back and let something drop. Maybe you were talking about the burn neighborhood? Yeah, okay, we're talking about the Burn neighborhood. Well, hello there. Now, why would Inspector Skalnik... Strange. Someone locked this recently. That lock is brand new. Huh. Weird shit's happening here. Strange. Someone locked this recently. That lock is brand new. Alright, um... Gustav. Oh. Yes? I'm really worried for Apollina. Uh, don't worry. She's with Mark, the painter. I know, but she should have been back by now. It never takes that long to model. You've modeled for him before? Yes, I did, and I didn't like it very much. Why? Well, I don't like him too much. Was he mean to you? No, actually, quite the contrary. He was always nice. <laughs> too nice. He just gives me the creeps. Anyway, can you do me a favor? Sure. Can you just go and look at Mark's studio? Okay, I'll have a look. And if Apollina's there, I say... That Milena wants to talk to you. I'll do as you wish. Thank you. Let's go here, make a save. Uh, and this is where we're gonna call it for today. So, thank you for watching. This was uh, Still Life, which is part two of our Hidden Gems playthrough. Um, make sure to go uh, to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what other Hidden Gems game you'd like me to play in the future. I actually already have a very long list, but hey, more games is always a nice thing. Um, uh, make sure to also go check out youtube.com slash games with Nick, which is my original channel where you can find 
uh, full playthroughs of some older games as well, uh, like the Monkey Islands games, the first two, uh, as well as the first Siberia game. We might get into Siberia 2 at some point, and maybe even Siberia 3, uh, it's something that I've been think thinking about. Uh, and also, follow me on Twitch, the slash games with Nick. By the time this video goes live, I'll probably be mostly done streaming until mid to late July, because I'm getting married, uh, and I'm going on my honeymoon afterwards. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, if you hit the follow button and you hit the bell, you will be notified when I go live uh, in the future. So, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this is Nick signing off, saying, let's keep retro playing together.